I'd like to start by saying a really, really heartfelt thank you for all those absolutely amazing comments I got for my last two vlogs. Um, I've just been overwhelmed, quite frankly, uh, at, at, at all your lovely messages, so thanks so much for all of those. Um, and also a big welcome to all my new subscribers, uh, that's just fantastic. So um, yeah, let's have a look at lockdown week three. done my weekly trip into Nantwich, uh, filled up with water, disposed of my rubbish, um, did a major supermarket shop because I was running short of things yet again. Um, I was hoping uh, I wanted to do uh, a pump out. I thought they did them at the services there but it's only an Elson disposal so I guess that means I'll have to take a trip to Overwater Marina later on in the week. I stayed overnight to upload a couple of uh, videos to YouTube and I can't really do that uh, where I'm mooring um, out in the countryside. Um, and I've got to say, I don't really I don't really enjoy mooring in Nantwich at the moment. It's, um, uh, I mean the town, the town is deserted, there's, there's hardly anyone in there. But the towpath, um, blimey, it's like a conveyor belt of walkers and cyclists and joggers. There were yesterday afternoon there were hundreds of people out along the towpath. Uh, it's just it was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, I have heard it said that the CRT, um, that's the Canal and River Trust, that CRT actually stands for uh, Cycle and Running Track. <laughs> now that would be a bit facetious, I've got to admit. I think, I, you know, to be honest, I think the CRT do a fantastic job. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, um, just crazy number of people on the towpath. Absolutely crazy. Like many of you, I've probably spent quite a lot of lockdown time scouring uh, YouTube. Um, and I've come across this absolutely fantastic channel that I'm going to recommend. Uh, now if you like camper vans, and I'm sure quite a few of you do, it's a similar kind of lifestyle to, to, uh, to this one. Um, if you like camper vans and photography and good banter, then check out Nev Cartledge and I'll leave a link to his uh, site down below. I mean it's, yeah, absolutely brilliant, brilliant site. Fantastic footage, amazing photographs and yeah, really funny guy. Um, and he travels around Ireland and Scotland and, uh, and in England and Wales um, in various places in his camper van taking fantastic photos. Check him out, it's really good.
So, how am I filling my days at the moment? Well, this morning I made myself a table out of uh, the breakfast bar that I used to have in my house and um, uh, this afternoon I've made a computer table from the same piece of wood. So um, yeah, and what a fabulous place to work. Isn't it great? Um, you know, lovely. I've noticed a few more aeroplanes going past in the last few days. I just kind of wonder where they're going, what kind of checks are done at the airports when people arrive. And you wonder how many people are actually on the planes as well. And why do people applaud when the plane lands? I don't get that at all. You don't clap the bus driver when you get off the bus, do you? Well, I woke up this morning and I went to make a cup of tea. And I normally like to get into bed with Earl Grey in the morning. Um, but when I went to put the milk in, I discovered that the milk was warm, which I thought was a bit odd. So I checked the fridge, and it turns out that I think I must have accidentally turned the fridge off yesterday. So, um, yeah, the freezer compartment was just full of food, um, and it's all defrosted. So it looks like I'm going to have to spend the day uh, cooking and refreezing what I had. So, um, yeah, I was hoping to get on with some woodwork today. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. Sausages. Duck. A joint of beef. Pork chop. Lots of white fish. Prawns. I think that's a curry. Beef mince. And veg. Blimey. Well, I can make a fish pie. Um, sausage casserole. Who knows? <laughs> First up, chilli con carne and sausage casserole. The galley is a complete... No, I can't say that. Well, the galley is a complete tip. All this cooking, I'm going to have to have a cup of tea. It's no good. It is now April the 17th, I think. Yeah, April the 17th. And whatever happened to April showers? It's got to be the, the driest April I've ever known. I mean, I can remember two very short showers in the whole of this month so far. Um, yeah, April showers. Oi, Trumpy boy, if you're watching, come on my channel and deny global warming. He's probably too busy getting tangoed, you know, getting getting his orange spray tan. Shh. Fish pie for tea then. Looks like I spoke too soon about those showers, doesn't it? I still have the beef the pork chop and the duck to cook, um, which I didn't get around to doing yesterday. Now, I was going to do them in my food smoker, but when I went to look, the charcoal has all disintegrated. I mean, I last used it on Christmas Day and it was fine. But uh, yeah, so there's no charcoal to light the smoker, which is a bit of a shame because smoked beef is a wonderful thing. Anyway, uh, let's start with the beef. First up, I'm going to make a rub for the beef. Um, I'm also going to make a sort of Chinesey barbecue sauce for the duck. And as regards the pork chop, I'm really not sure yet. We'll just have to wait and see. Maybe that can have a uh, Chinesey kind of barbecue sauce on it as well. For the ingredients for the rub, I'm just going to start with some olive oil. Uh, I'm going to add some black pepper and some grated ginger. Now you want lots and lots of black pepper. And when you think you've added enough, 
add a bit more. I'm just grating the ginger. My kids hated it when I put ginger in a curry when they were little. They loved that cat. Grate a decent amount of ginger into it. Another rub I like to do for beef is um, just garlic and horseradish and black pepper. That works really well as well. I've also decided to add two green finger chilies um, just because I rather like green chilli really. So a bit more oil on that, give it a good mix around and then we'll uh, coat the beef with it. The beef as you can see is a little bit past its best but um, it smells good to me so I'm going to eat it anyway. I'm just going to stuff some of this down inside. There we go, lovely jubbly. Now I've just put that in a roasting tin and I'm just going to set it aside. It needs a minimum of half an hour, but you know, the longer you give it, the better. So um, I'm going to give it a couple of hours. And in the meantime, I'll make the barbecue sauce for the duck and the pork chop. Okay, and ingredients for this little baby. Um, I've got from left to right some brown sugar, uh, some ginger, some garlic, uh, some tomato puree, I've got some malt vinegar, some tomato ketchup, some olive oil, some soy sauce and salt and pepper. To the olive oil I've added the salt and pepper and I've grated the ginger and the garlic. Uh, now I'm going to add some soy sauce, decent amount of soy sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of malt vinegar, not too much. Going to add some tomato ketchup. Quite a bit of tomato ketchup if you can. Um, I've obviously not got a huge amount left sadly. Going to add a little bit of tomato puree and some brown sugar. Yeah, probably about half a tablespoon of brown sugar. And I've managed to get the rest of the tomato ketchup out of the bottle. So I've added that. Have a quick taste. A bit more soy. Cock on. So I've put a few slits in the uh, in the duck leg. Now I'm just going to cover the whole thing in this mixture. And again, I'll set it aside for uh, a couple of hours and that'll be great. Make sure the other side's nicely done too. Massage it all in. Like I say, this is absolutely amazing for spare ribs um, or even pork belly, but uh, I've never tried it with duck before to be honest, but that looks good to me. And in a different bowl I've used the same mixture to put on top of the pork chop. I left Cool Pilot about 10 minutes ago um, and I'm on my way to Overwater Marina now. Uh, I'm going to get my pump out done at last, so that should last me another five or six weeks. Um, yeah, I was going to say by which time hopefully this lockdown business will be over, but I don't think it will somehow, do you? Um, anyway, yeah. Pump out successfully done. Um, it's going to fill up with water while I'm here, may as well, and um, turn around and head back I think. Uh, can't think of anything else that needs doing. Oh actually, might pop into Ordham just to get rid of some rubbish. Pump out, done. Water filling, done. Dispose of some rubbish, job done. And I also popped into Ordham for a few things, so um, yeah, heading back to Cool Pilot now. No, 
and it's been pointed out to me by a few people um, that I made a few silly mistakes on lockdown week one. Uh, of course the River Mersey does not go into the North Sea, it goes into the Irish Sea. Um, yeah, well, you know, my excuse for that is I lived in the northeast of England for 29 years and uh, I was kind of surrounded by the North Sea, so I'm used to saying North Sea. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Um, oh, here's the other one, uh, Cane Hill Locks. Well, of course, that's certainly not a, a, a staircase lock flight, is it? I mean, you know, um, 29 locks in a staircase, that would be ludicrous. I've got to admit, I was quite sceptical um, <laughs> about that, um, but I included it anyway, so... <sighs> Steady me. Um, but there you go. And, yeah, the other thing is, I'm, uh, I'm quite surprised at how polite you've all been. Uh, hardly anyone has mentioned my atrocious singing. Um, so, yeah, thank you for all being so polite. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Cheers. <laughs> um, I mean, the reason why I included that, actually, is because um, having spoken to several other solo boaters, I believe quite a few of us actually sing whilst we're cruising along. Um, quite a few of us actually dance at the same time as well. But, hey, I'm not filming that. Now, I must admit, I have no idea when I will next be able to get a haircut. Um, do you think, actually, that long hair will become trendy again after this lockdown palaver is finished? It may well do. Um, I mean, you know, I've had a haircut like this since about 1970. In fact, it's been a lot longer than this at times. Um, but, yeah, all those kids with their pudding bowl haircuts, They'll all be growing out and they'll start to look vaguely normal soon, won't they? So maybe they'll kind of think, oh yeah, you know, we can go, we can grow our hair long and look cool and trendy, like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> and another thing I thought of was that when all this is over, we should have a world hugging day. And you should have to have hug or less everyone you meet, whether it's in your office or your workplace, um, walking down the street, wherever, you know, just hug people. Um, get rid of this kind of, this stigma of social distancing. It would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Although I must admit, I can't see it going down very well in Britain, can you? Oh, could we not just shake hands, old chap? No. <laughs> Kiss a hug. 